Good afternoon, folks. It's noon, and I'd like to welcome you to the Washington County Public Affairs Forum, where we have Katie Riley speaking on the Children's Opportunity Fund Initiative. Joseph, would you pull off the high end some channel one, please? Thank you. Uh, I want to uh, let you know that there's an opportunity to give the forum some money. And I know you don't want to hear a sales pitch, but I want to thank John McWilliams for uh, pulling out some apparel. So if you'd like to be noted as a forum member, for 10 bucks you can get a, t uh, a collared shirt, or for 10 bucks you can get a t-shirt. And we'd like to turn these assets into clothing for your closet and your body. So if you want, See John McWilliams, give us some money and get a shirt. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, one person in particular today. His name is Joseph Tyner, and he has stepped up to the plate and done a number of things. He's hiding back there behind the lights, and he shows up early in order to help us set up string cable, get a TV show production going, and uh, he's just been an all-star volunteer, and I really appreciate his efforts, and he needs to be recognized for that. I'd also like to introduce in the center of the room Paco. Paco is our server, and he has um, uh, 21 children and 37 cousins, and all of which depend on him for food, nutrition, and income. So that is my cue to remind you to tip your server so that he can feed all of his dependents. Uh, he works hard and does a great job, and uh, he's smiling in embarrassment now, I can see it. So I want to thank you because Paco also serves a couple of us in the room with the uh, uh, Optimus Club of Beaverton and, uh, uh, who, and also the um, um, Aloha Business Association. He's really stepped up and helped with uh, taking care of all those groups. So he's, uh, he's a good guy. Uh, that being said, what I'd like to do is introduce uh, Katie Bradley for the Children's Opportunity Fund Initiative. And this is a, a presentation I've seen before. It's excellent. And what I'd like to ask you to do, even though I know you're eating, is put your hands together and welcome Katie Riley. Thank you, Eric. Well, it's a real pleasure to be here and to talk to you about the Children's Opportunity Fund Initiative of Washington County. And as you will see, this is a very important group. It's fairly new. Um, I will tell you a little bit more about it as we go along. Tap on the mouse bar. So we need to have sustainable funding for children's programs in Washington County. The need is really great. By 2014, Washington County will have the largest youth population, uh, which is kids between the ages of 0 and 17, of any other county in the whole state of Oregon. So we are really growing fast in terms of our youth. However, at the same time, child abuse is increasing in Washington County. Between 2000 and 2010, child abuse reports increased by 77% in our county. Now, some of that could be a result of people being more aware and reporting more, but it probably also reflects the fact that um, there is more child abuse going on, and so this is a real problem. At the same time, child poverty has also increased in Washington County. Between 2000 and 2010, there's been a large increase in eligibility for free and reduced lunch among our uh, school-age children. In 2000, about 22% of the kids qualified for free and reduced lunch. In 2010, it was 40%. In 2012, it was 42%. That is a large jump. And one of the things we know about kids uh, qualifying for free and reduced lunch is that as they get older, they get more embarrassed and they're less likely to let their parents apply for what they're eligible for because they don't want to be labeled as well. So this is really uh, a large issue. 
Also, kids who are unsupervised are more at risk. Between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m., we know that's when most crime, most problems occur. Kids uh, may be home by themselves, playing video games or out on the street or experimenting with drugs, whatever. This is not a good situation for our kids. So we really need to have them involved in positive activities during those non-school times. At-risk children without quality pre-kindergarten in one study were found to be 70% more likely to commit violent crimes. So it's really important that we have good programs for kids when they're young, but also as they get older to make sure that those uh, preventive practices continue on for those kids. Positive programs really add value to the kids and to the community as a whole. Academic success does not come from school alone. Children and youth need additional supports. They need assistance with their homework, especially if they're not getting it in terms of uh, overcrowded classrooms where the teachers cannot spend as much time helping them out in class. They need to be involved in positive activities. When kids are adolescents, they tend to take risks. Okay, this is part of their growing up time. But if they take negative risks, then there's problems. We want them to take positive risks, such as trying out for the school play or learning a new sport. But we do not want them to take negative risks, such as experimenting with drugs or other negative activities. Mentoring is also important. And it's important for kids to have role models, not just their parents, but other people as well, other adults. And they do need parental coaching and support. And if kids are successful in school, this means it's an economic advantage, both for them and for the community as a whole, because then they contribute back to the community in terms of earning more, paying more taxes themselves, and also their involvement with other people in the community too, in a positive way. So the Washington County Commission on Children and Families, of which I've been a part for a number of years and chaired for four years, we uh, were asked to do a comprehensive community plan in 2002. There were about 200 people from Washington County involved, from all sections of the county, different groups. It was a really um, very important, successful effort to try and figure out what our priorities should be, what we should be doing. Well, those people decided that our number one priority should be community schools. And uh, how many people here have heard of community schools before? Couple, one, two. So um, community schools are where the school is the hub of the neighborhood and that uh, you have different activities there, that it doesn't shut down at 2.30 and people walk away and lock the doors, but you have kids there doing sports, doing different activities, it could be quilting, they could be practicing on computers, whatever, maybe a robotics class, um, whatever. And then even people from the community could be coming in and taking classes. For instance, seniors might come in and take a computer class even from kids, so that there would be definitely, uh, you know, a benefit going both ways. So community schools was the top priority and the Commission on Children and Families worked to make that a reality. We formed a community school team. We provided some funding to school districts. Unfortunately, it was not very much, but they did have some after-school activities as a result of our involvement. Um, we also helped in terms of getting a Safe School, Safe Students grant for Hillsborough Schools, which lasted for five years, and that was very successful. For we partnered with Parks and Rec Department, Police Department, a whole variety of people. We started up their CARES teams to ensure academic success of kids 
who were struggling as well. We also did surveys of principals. We had a 96% return. Anybody who is familiar with research knows that 96% is unheard of in terms of having a wonderful result. Um, so they told us about what they needed to have in their schools, to have it be a community school, and whether or not they already had those kind of services available. We also um, uh, did a community school summit, and about 200 people attended from that. There was a lot of interest in having community <coughs> schools. And we fixed up materials to help schools identify themselves as to whether or not they thought they were a community school. We prepared a model um, budget that they could use in terms of what it would cost to hire an administrator of a community school. Because you do need somebody there who's a liaison with the school, and so it's also not just babysitting, but there's coordination with the academic efforts that are going on in that school too. And then we provided some technical assistance, and we recognized the schools that, from their self-assessment, felt that they were a community school. We, we distributed banners so they could have them outside their school saying they were a community school. Um, but this money was not enough. So we had a group that decided that we would found this Children's Opportunity Fund Initiative, an advisory committee, and we invited other people to join as well. And that happened a couple of years ago. In the meantime, we have found out that uh, the Commission on Children and Families was going to be disbanded. So this made our work even more important. The uh, commissions are being disbanded because there's going to be an early learning council and a youth development council at the state level. The early learning council, they are putting out RFPs or requests for proposals from organizations or from uh, various groups throughout the state to work with uh, early learning with children of a very young age, zero to six. So they, they're getting that underway. Washington County was going to apply, but decided to hold off for another year. So they don't have their money going into early learning right now, or after 2014. Actually, the funding for the Commission on Children and Families was continued one more year till July 2014 that the commission itself was being disbanded as of the end of December this year. So what they uh, have done is they've formed an early learning council and a youth development council. The youth development council is supposed to be serving kids from six on. Um, however, they do not have a plan as yet. We don't know what they're going to do. So that's pretty much up in the air. But in the meantime, as of July 2014, all of the money that's come from the Commission on Children and Families and served the children in this county, at least to some extent, is going to be gone. So Children's Opportunity Fund of Washington County, or COFI, what we call it for short, um, was formed. So our vision is that every Washington County child deserves to grow up in a safe and nurturing home, to succeed in school, and to pursue a pro prosperous adulthood. Our mission is to obtain sustained or to sustain evidence-based children's programs throughout Washington County. So that would include child abuse prevention, community schools, nutrition programs, mentoring school-based health clinics and after-school programs. The Commission on Children and Families was able to um, have some components of community schools put in place. They made sure that there was a family resource center in each district, school district in the county, and also set up um, um, school-based health centers. So that's another component. Um, and has helped in some after-school programs, but 
like I said before, it was not enough, and now that funding will be going away. We investigated different ways to get sustainable funding. We took a look at um, federal grants. 21st century grants are a great way to help out with after school programs. However, that money goes away at the end of the grant. Um, and so we see here a couple of uh, schools did get 21st century funding, but then that money was destined to go away. After school parks and recreation non-sports programs are a good way to go as well, but those have been cut back in some areas. In Hill Hillsboro, they've been cut back. Forest Grove did not have any non-sports programs at all. But um, they did get a new, Forest Grove did get a new federal grant. I was reading recently, and so they will have that. But once again, it's a federal grant. So at the end of that period, once again, that money is not going to be available. Other programs, there are some other programs around through nonprofits, but they have to fight each time to get funding as well. Thank you. Part of the reason for these problems is that the tax base has been kept about the same, but the total tax breaks have been <coughs> increasing greatly over the past few years, as you can see here. So like the money that's spent on K-12 spending, that's kept about the same level. It got a slight boost in the legislature this past year. But once again, the tax breaks pick up an awful lot of that money. So the money from the state has not been available to help out. We looked at other possible funding sources, such as foundations, federal grants. Once again, federal grants, oftentimes they're there for a while, but then they go away. Social impact bonds. This is something that has been tried in England, and this is where they sell bonds for improvement on a specific targeted uh, outcome, such as in England where there might be um, uh, kids who had been uh, juvenile offenders, and if they kept them from going back from uh, lower and could lower their recidivism rate, then the bond money would be paid back. And they're trying this in Massachusetts for some programs. The problem with this avenue is that you still have to pay back the money. So you've got to have the money at some point as well. Cities, the county, we've been investigating these possibilities. The Education Service District. Uh, There's another possibility. I was on the uh, ESD board for a couple of years, and we had put in a proposal to have uh, the ESD administer community schools, so at least we would have an administrative uh, venue there that we didn't have to worry about keeping track of money, all of it, hiring people, making sure that people were paid, and all of the HR details and everything. But that was in 2008 when we had that proposal. We all know what happened in 2008. We had a recession. And so what happened was that then the ESDs had to really focus on just what their priorities were too, and they couldn't add an extra program. We looked into having a special services district, and we looked at having a children's levy. Um, the models we've looked at are the Portland children's levy, also in Florida, Miami-Dade County had passed a children's levy, and then we're looking to uh, push that out to the rest of the state. In Portland, they really have a good model. They have now passed their children's levy for the third time this past year, in the spring. And um, they've been very successful. 95% of their money goes to programs. They have an advisory council. They have some subcommittees that review uh, proposals from nonprofits. And they make uh, uh, recommendations to the advisory committee, which then does the final allocation. The 5% that goes to staffing, those people then oversee and make sure that the programs actually implement the, what they said they were going to do in their proposals. So this is a very successful program. 
So what we're trying to do now is take the first steps. We want to do a countywide survey or a poll to uh, provide perspective on what are people's uh, awareness of the needs for after-school programs or out-of-school time programs. And that, by that I'm not talking just about after-school, but also like summer, weekends, what, whether people are aware of that need and what they would like in terms of how it might be implemented, and then also the desired structure, whether that might be a levy or a foundation or what, and their willingness to participate in different options, whether they'd be willing to have payments on a sliding scale, whether they'd be willing to have a levy, be, then be allocated funding for a levy, uh, or whatever they might want to uh, suggest. After that polling, after the polling is done, we would need to develop messaging and disseminate the information and then perhaps resurvey the community. And then prioritize what funding mechanism we were going to pursue. And our target is 2016. Well, it's 2013 now, so that doesn't leave a whole lot of time. So we have a lot to do. So what could you do to help? You could contribute to our fund. We're doing a countywide poll. We figure it's probably going to cost between fifteen to twenty or twenty-five thousand dollars to do a poll of the county. That would be actually a credible poll. You could endorse the project. We have a, a lot of endorsements so far. We have a steering committee. Happy to have anybody come and, and be on the committee. And you could in, introduce us to people who care. Um, so I have some handouts, and which Joseph's going to help me with. And one of them, uh, the first one tells you about what we are doing, gives that information, and then there's also a, um, a form for endorsing us and making a contribution. All contributions are tax deductible. We have a fiscal agent, which is Impact Northwest, which is a nonprofit that operates out of Portland, but also has some activity in Washington County. And their executive director is on our steering committee and volunteered to uh, have their group be a fiscal agent for us. So they're not charging us anything. And at the same time, all contributions are tax deductible. So that's um, really very, very helpful. Um, we are also doing some fundraisers next Monday, uh, the 30th. Sweet Tomatoes is letting us do a fundraiser there, and they're contributing 15% of all our proceeds for people who come in and say you're going to be there for Kofi, and uh, we would love to have you come. Uh, I realize I'm in a competing restaurant here, but, <laughs> but uh, we're very happy to have Sweet Tomatoes help us out. Um, so this would be very much appreciated if you could come to Sweet Tomatoes for dinner next Monday night and uh, help us out, have a good dinner, and, and also make a contribution. Um, so these are some of the people who've endorsed us so, so far, just a select group. We have some businesses, Northwest Natural, uh, Vernier Software, Hillsborough Pharmacy, Primrose and Tumbleweeds. I'm happy to have other businesses do it as well. A number of different organizations. Uh, including um, Boys and Girls Clubs, Campfire, Centro Cultural, um, and the city of Beaverton. The city of Cornelius endorsed us 100% uh, uh, unanimous. Uh, Fight Crime, Invest in Kids, Stanford Children, and you can see a number of uh, important people here. Suzanne Morimichi, Bridget Cook from Adelante Mujeres, uh, Denny Doyle, Beaverton Mayor, Lou Ogden, Tualatin Mayor, and Pete Truax. Forest Grove Mayor. So a number of people. So we'd be, we would love to have you join our uh, group of endorsers. So if you want more information, I'm happy to provide it. Um, we have, I have a, a uh, clipboard there that can go around that if you want to be on a listserv and get information from us, we do have an e-newsletter of a volunteer who's put, putting that to get, together, doing a great job, and help, let you know a little bit more about what's going on. Um, 
and uh, like I said, be happy to have you get involved. So all you have to do is contact me. That's my email address and my uh, phone number. I'm happy to talk to you anytime, and I'm very happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you very much. session told us we can't do it, the state can't do any really more bonds because of the problems with um, paying of the bonds we issued for all the prisons we built and some we didn't. Um, how can we, and the your school board's going to go out for a bond, I think, uh, for a new high school in a few years or something like that. With regard to that, those bonding issues, until we get, I guess, um, some of those taken care of, where's the room in, in the, uh, in the, in the um, state's buying authority? Um, issue new bonds. If the treasurer said he didn't want to see new bonds issued um, until we start paying down the prison bonds. Um, I really, in terms of our investigation of the bonds uh, avenue, we were thinking that that might not be a very viable alternative. So that's why I had mentioned about the social bonding, that that might not work too well. But we're looking into other mechanisms. Um, Jim King, four member. Um, I'm not sure, sure if I missed it. I mean, thanks for speaking, but um, are you a volunteer? Are you getting paid? How does your group get its funding? And you spoke about valid polling. Has there been a problem with invalid polling? Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm a volunteer. I'm 100% volunteer. We have all volunteers in our group. Nobody's being paid. Um, we have a steering committee of about 12 people who none of us get any any money. We meet once a month and we're doing different things. Um, uh, let's see, your other question was, oh, the poll, valid polling. Yes, it needs to be done by a research firm. I mean, you could do like a convenience sample, and that is, you know, ask people, whoever was available, but that wouldn't necessarily be representative, because you would only get the people who wanted to be part of the poll. So, uh, and then there are some polling um, that's being done by uh, online polling. And so we're concerned that uh, an online poll might only get people who had computers. And so we want to make sure that it's a representative sample. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming today. The question that I have is, there's lots of organizations and creating another one tends to mean more competition. And I was just curious, when you were looking at different approaches, did you look at perhaps consult or coordinating with another organization instead of creating a new one? And by creating a new one, is there something special? Um, there is actually no other organization doing what we're proposing to do. We have uh, talked to county officials as the possibility of maybe having going in with uh, the county on doing this so that there wouldn't be overhead, um, that it would be taken care of through um, administrative channels that are already in place. So that is a possibility. We've talked to different cities, but we're talking about doing something for the entire county. And so there is no other group. And like I said, the commission is not going to exist. Yes, John. Uh, John member. Um, I wanted to, um, to ask about um, what you said about the county um, deciding not to apply for a county in the first year. Um, could you clarify whether that means that, um, that the funding which currently is available through the end of June 2014 um, uh, whether the county is applying, will be for, has the opportunity to apply for funds for fiscal year 14 15, or is there, does their decision mean that there will be at least a one year gap in funding for such programs? 
but they're not applying for it yet. The funding uh, is in place until the end of June 2014. I'm not sure whether there would be what will happen after that. I don't really know because there might be a gap. There were the state was going to fund nine hubs, what they call hubs, to provide services, and yet. That doesn't necessarily mean that the money would have gone directly to the nonprofits that were already see receiving money too. Okay, there's supposed to be what's supposed to be in place through the early learning council hubs are managers who would help connect people to services, and um, if those services had received funding funding through the commission and were no longer receiving that money then they might have a difficult time providing services as well. So is the, is the county's decision not to apply in the first year, is it a decision not to apply to be a hub? Is that That's right. So will, so other hubs will be in place in fiscal year 1450, but not Washington County? Probably not. Thank you. Yes. <coughs> Thank you, Mark Craig, for a member. Can you give us a little more detail on a particularly successful program that you've already funded, or if you have already, you'd like to fund? I saw some names of the, your endorsers have great programs. And, uh, right. great. Well, we haven't funded anybody yet, because okay. we don't have the money in place. But programs that we would like to fund include Adelante Mujeres. They're uh, a great program. They've had an Adelante Chicas program, where they've worked with girls to help them be successful, to have a career orientation, and it seems to be doing quite well. Um, there are other uh, groups, I mean, Boys and Girls Club, obviously, they do a lot. Uh, they always need funding. Um, there's uh, Centro Cultural. They have after-school programs for kids as well. Um, so there are a number of programs. And like the Portland um, Children's Fund, each program would be able to apply, all nonprofits would be able to apply and hopefully get funded through there too. Yeah. Anyone else? Chris Leslie, our member, could you please give us a mission statement of your organization? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back so you see it in print. <laughs> our mission right there, to sustain evidence-based children's programs throughout Washington County. Wouldn't uh, study halls in schools be a very important aspect of your program? Um, yes, some, stu uh, some students do have study halls, and but those are done through the K-12 program, but other kids need additional help. So most of the after-school programs that are in place now do have tutoring, which is like a study hall. Uh, for instance, like at South Meadows, uh, which is one of the middle schools in Hillsboro, they have uh, tutoring right after school, and then they also have other classes that the kids could take as well. So they might need help in terms of math or something else. I found study halls to be very helpful yeah. in my school. You're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> Just a couple things. I appreciate John's question because uh, I've asked a question I want to follow up on in terms mm -hmm. of making sure the county uh, is uh, fully engaged in the transitional process. And, uh, so I'm going to follow up on that one. Uh, number two, um, uh, I do a work here with Graham. So. Yes, thank you very much. You go ahead and put my name. Uh, number three, um, what about 12 Mills Park and Rec District and uh, the cities of Tigard and Point South? Uh, are there any uh, after school programs uh, through, the, through the Park District, through some of the cities in the south part of the county? Yeah, the Tualatin Valley uh, Parks and Rec, they have had, they started a community school program a couple of years ago 
in several of the schools and several of the middle schools. I believe that's still going on. Um, I haven't had them participate recently, but they, when we first formed our group, they were attending. So, uh, and then Tiger, I haven't uh, been able to get a hold of them quite yet, but um, we'll work on that. They have a, a real crisis. In fact, we're working on a story to put in the newspaper about their middle school program, which is in jeopardy. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Eric Squires, forum member. I was, uh, I ask that you share with us the sales resistance that you've heard on either fundraising or getting traction for the startup of this, of this program in Washington County. So for example, um, why, what objections have you heard from people writing checks or volunteering uh, in order to uh, uh, get this off the ground? Most people are very supportive. Um, I think that they might be a little bit hesitant to um, be affiliated with a new program, but most people I've talked to really do believe that this is needed. Uh, in terms of writing out checks, I mean, everybody knows that they've got different priorities, and so that may be a problem. But um, uh, a number of people have made contributions. We have close to $8,000 in contributions so far, so we're, we're working on it. And, uh, um, people are a little bit leery about maybe having a levy. And uh, so, you know, people, property taxes are an issue, and so that that is something that people are concerned about. But um, in Portland, at least on their uh, polling, about 80% of the people were in favor of their levy. So their vote passed, 60% uh, of the people voting in Portland um, for the third time past their children's levy because they know that they're getting a lot of value for their money. So. John McWilliams, board member. Um, I'm wondering about other civic organizations. Are you having the opportunity to go out and talk to Rotary Clubs, the Qantas, uh, other groups such as that? who also could be supported in the possibility because I know they have different projects they like to endorse and support. Um, we've uh, spoken to uh, some groups and we are very happy to uh, be able to speak to other groups as well. Since we're a relatively new group, it's really important for us to get the word out. And so any uh, opportunities that we could hear about to talk to other groups, we would love to have those opportunities. Thank you. Yeah. I was wondering, Katie, whether, whether you have any um, funding goal in mind, um, what, what level of support do you think would be necessary to support the kinds of programs that you would like to see in Washington County for kids? And, sense of what that translates into in terms of, for example, a levy amount? Um, I think that we would need to look at that more closely. Uh, the levy in Portland passed is, uh, 40 cents on $1,000 of assessed value. If we did that in Washington County, it would be about $20 million, uh, which would be very substantial and would really make it uh, pretty easy to fund a lot of good programs. Um, I'm not sure whether we would ask for that or not. One of the reasons that we that you do polling is you find out what would be acceptable to people. Can you give us a sense of the level of funding that is being lost with the end of the commission? I believe it's about five or six million. Yeah. <coughs> Well, good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, Lee Coleman, forum member. Uh, Commissioner Dyke uh, mentioned here a couple of weeks ago that the county is going to uh, give out of the kindness of its heart, uh, collectively, uh, $10 million to schools in the county. 
Are you going to get any of that money? Uh, and if they, not, if not, can you pressure the board of commissioners? It's really too bad. But, uh, well, you. Yeah, he's here. Are we going to pressure the commissioners to portion up that and uh, provide some funding for the organization? Um, I have talked with uh, County Chair Dyke and all, all of the commissioners about what we're doing, and they're all interested and receptive. I don't, the money that's coming to the county is gain share money, and that is going directly to the schools. Um, so I'm not sure exactly whether we would be able to get any gain share money and how those discussions might go. We are certainly open to having that happen. That would be very nice. I'm sympathetic to the to the thing. I hate to sound like it. My questions are in any way uh, negative to the process, but um, the problem of tax compression comes up when you're talking about a new levy. I was talking about the problem of bonds, but it doesn't sound like there'd be much of a problem if you're talking about 20 cents on a per thousand. But um, how would you deal with the issue of tax compression if you were talking to folks about it, the levy? Um, tax compression is an interesting topic. Um, the school um, limit on taxes is no more than $5 per uh, thousand total, uh, but that depends on what area of the county you're in because it varies according to what the tax, tax, taxable um, area, taxation area is. Um, for all other targets of funding, the limit is $10 for $1,000 of assessed taxation. So I don't believe the county has hit that level yet. Um, Portland did hit their level, and it affected all of the <clears throat> nonprofits there that had received money, and they then had to get a percentage of what uh, was passed. So it is an issue. Uh, people are very weary about that issue. And I totally understand. But it's something that would need to be explored. Jim K, floor member again. Um, is there any concern about accountability or responsibility for these other governmental organizations donating to schools? Because, I mean, schools aren't responsible for paving roads or jails. Those are accountable to other organizations. So how is the county and the city and the service district, especially like the park district, being donating tax dollars to schools when schools already have an agreed upon percentage of the tax dollars. I mean, there's concern that there's not, um, it's almost pandering for the children when the schools have already got an agreed upon amount of money. Thank you. Right, I think you're speaking about the statewide standards of allocation, and um, I'm not sure how that's being addressed. Um, that is something that other counties might want to take a look at. Chris Leslie, board member. Again, uh, in talking to you earlier, you said that uh, Impact Oregon was going to be handling your finances. Impact Northwest. Northwest. Yeah, they're a nonprofit. Yeah. And they're located where? They're located in Portland, but they do have services in, I believe they have one school they're working with in. Washington County, they provide uh, to other nonprofits, or they provide other nonprofit programs throughout the Northwest uh, Portland area, which includes uh, Clark County. But they do uh, child abuse prevention, they do mentoring, and they operate a number of the Sun Schools, which is uh, the uh, abbreviation for Schools Uniting Neighborhoods which are like community schools in the Portland public school system. And so they um, have grants through the Portland Children's Levy for that. So they're already operating as a nonprofit. And they, they also have helped us. Uh, we have put in uh, grant proposals ourselves, uh, trying to get that as a funding source, too. Isn't Portland having financial troubles, and how can you Go to them. Well, this is a separate levy. For the Portland Children's Levy was a separate levy that was passed. The Portland City 
Uh, their involvement with the Portland Children's Levy is that they provide space for them to use office space um, on a pro bono basis, so they don't. In bureaucratic study hall, huh? <laughs> Could be. It's a small donation from them. Bill Kroger, forum member. Thanks for coming in, Katie. Thank you. Nice presentation, and I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, I went to an opera Saturday night, and I learned uh, they did a little presentation, and I learned that the uh, they have a foundation or something that puts on uh, operas in the schools around the state. They, last year, they reached 20,000 kids with opera and workshops and things. And I was just kind of wondering, in some of these programs you're talking about after school and things, if they would include the arts, like opera or acting or music or things like that sure i don't see why not yeah that would be a, a great addition i know that a lot of the programs the out of school time programs that exist now like adelante Mujeres or centro cultural they provide arts education too yeah. i mean after all we know that for a lot of kids that's one way of getting them to identify more with the school because they feel then more that they belong. Even if they don't necessarily do super well in math, you know, they might feel that they still enjoy music or something else too and get them to stay there a little bit longer. With no more questions, I'm going to call for some applause for our amazing speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you come again soon. Folks, I'm going to just give you about 90 seconds worth of a couple of uh, quick items. First, procedurally, you don't have to wait in line at the cash register. You can just leave your money or your card at the table, and our amazing servers will just deal with it right there so you can save some time. What I'd like to ask is that you understand that we have a couple social media platforms that we use in order to message while we're not meeting. We have a Twitter account. It's at WC Forum. And we also have a Facebook page. And what I'd like to do is close the meeting down with an appeal to the members of the forum. If you have forum history, photographs, memorabilia, uh, recordings, if you have anything from the forum from the past, I ask that you share it with each other on social media or bring it to the meeting if you're not social media savvy where we will share it on your behalf. Uh, very briefly, I can uh, load this. Maybe I can't. Here's our Facebook page, and uh, we have some neat people, I think. Uh, we've got Kroger, and we've got, uh, um, oh, help, help me out with the guy on the left. Gregor Sherson. Okay, and then Nellie Fox in the center. Who's the guy on the left? Unknown, I think he's in jail. <laughs> he should be. And uh, this has been a- i on the forum. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have uh, started sharing pictures of the forum's past, and this photo was donated to us by uh, Nellie Fox, and she had done a remarkable job at uh, taking care of some, uh, uh, some forum history. And so that is my appeal to you, is that uh, I'm taking pictures during the forum so we can preserve the moment for the future. Also, John McWilliams, I want to thank you for kind of brokering the deal and making sure I got some of Nellie's photos. Uh, what we're doing at the forum, I think, is really important. And uh, I close with this appeal. Uh, one of my failures is that we have an amazing person. His name was Forrest Soth. And he was here week after week and was the stalwart, the anchor of the forum. And we lost him without me so much as being able to conduct an interview or snapping a, a good high resolution photo. And learning from that mistake, uh, that's why I'm spending as much time as I possibly can documenting these meetings very well so that for posterity, and also for research, uh, my, I guess my true closing comment will be this. Willamette Week uh, was very interested in the Supreme Court race where we had Nina Cook and Judge Baldwin. And they fact-checked that race by going through our video archives. And I was so surprised to be reading Willamette Week and saying, we went through and fact-checked this by going up through Washington County Public Affairs Forum websites that were hosted on YouTube. So the efforts that are going on behind the scenes, and why I, again, uh, was just so smitten with the, the work product of Mr. Uh, Joseph Tyner, is that he helps us accomplish those tasks. So for that, I want to thank you for another successful forum. Thank you for being in attendance, and uh, we'll see you next week.